Hi, and welcome to this new educational series on the Lyra Starter Project for Unreal Engine 5. For background, I've been working with the engine for about six or seven years now, and I've had to restart my project at least four times. These are largely due to decisions I made that led to a project structure that became unmanageable over time. So with this latest restart and with this series, I'm attempting to take those learnings and apply them to the Lyra project. The objective is to make a structure of the systems in a way that they are modular and manageable using the gameplay features as the main way of isolating systems. So let's look at what we intend to do in this series. Again, I'll put multiple videos up each chapter. This is the first chapter on how we're going to organize our structure. It's important, I think, to introduce those core organizational structures early and how I've started to build systems and it comes together in a way that the gameplay is successful. In subsequent videos, I'll dive deeper into each of the systems and explain why I elected to make some of the decisions in the design to keep things modular. This series is not meant to be a follow along, click here tutorial. There are lots of those already posted and I've watched many of them over the years. As I started to unpack Unreal and then Lyra, uh, we've also learned that we will be mixing some C++ and Blueprint with a focus on the blueprint in these series, as it's the easiest way to share the concepts visually. First, before I jump into the rest of the organizational structure, I do wanna give thanks and credit to those that have helped along the way. So many thanks to the following folks who have um, either posted educational series on YouTube, helped me in Discord channels, provided knowledge and insights that I've built upon. So Dart for um, his general gameplay ability systems and multiplayer knowledge. If you haven't seen his open world uh, server series, there's a great deal of information in there on how gameplay abilities work, as well as how to deal with persistence and data storage. Uh, Lyra is being a much more new concept. There are less videos out there on it, but some of the ones that I've watched are listed here. I've also explored the Capture the Flag sample project that's available on GitHub repository, and of course, any of the Unreal evangelists that share basically how Unreal has been working over the years. I also want to thank the uh, Marketplace contributors. Um, I've used some Marketplace assets in this series. Um, I am not an uh, artist by any means, so a huge thanks out to these uh, artists who have created content and placed them on the Marketplace, which we'll be leveraging throughout this series. So, that brings me to the first lessons learned. These are the asset packs that I've elected to pull forward into this project. Some character project asset packs, some environmental asset packs, some icons for crafting, some Niagara effects um, for in the world, and an outstanding building system, uh, stab build or stable build that um, we'll be using in the building component section of this. My first lesson learned for the group is don't just import these directly into your project. Uh, when you do that, you'll quickly find that you'll end up with thousands of assets in your uh, project that you're not even using. And finding them and cleaning them out and managing the size of your program will become very difficult. So what I suggest you do is create a staging project and then your live project. I tend to load the assets first into the staging project. And then in the staging project, I'll create a folder called temp. And in my main project, I'll have a folder called temp. What I'm attempting to do is inside the staging project, I will move the assets around from their native structures into a structure underneath temp. And then when I migrate, I check that nothing is left, uh, nothing is referenced that is not already in the temp folder. That way I make sure I get all of the assets and its dependencies. When I migrate, they'll all land in the temp folder in my live project. Then when I go into the live project, I'll pick those assets up out of the temp folder and move them to their final resting place. This is really helpful in a way that you can bring as many assets into the staging folder as you want. Only pick the assets that you need, moving them into your live project. And occasionally you can blow away the staging project and rebuild it from scratch to keep things simple. So that's tip number one. All right, now let's talk about the structure of the Lyra project. What I've done is leaned in heavily into the plugins. First, I've removed some of the plugins that are no longer required or just 
just not required. So Pocket Worlds, the Lyra X tools, the top down area, Shooter Explorer, I'll come back to that in a minute, and Shooter Tests. So those were all removed from my project structure. I then added these other plugins. The first one I added was called Abilities Core. I don't know why I put core on the end of it, but when I put core on the end of that one, I just carried that forward and continued adding core to all of them. In Abilities Core, I keep all of my items, inventory, crafting, and abilities. This isolates those elements from the rest of the systems and ensures that I do good design. When I said I took out Shooter Explorer, I first copied those objects into my Ability Core folder because that will be the foundation of the inventory and item system. And then I took out the Shooter Explorer folder. So basically, Abilities Core starts with whatever was in Shooter Explorer and then builds upon it. Once I had my items and my inventory and my abilities set up, I then built on top of that the buildable system. I took the uh, marketplace assets by heavy coat and then wrapped them with my ability system from Ability Core and my inventory system so that buildables consume inventory, are triggered by an ability, and basically work uh, on top of Ability Core. Characters, I loaded into Character Core. It's basically just a uh, mirror of the many folders in the core project where I have incremental cosmetics, skins, etc. Uh, climate core is where all my external landscape and weather systems are. This was important to isolate the environmental components away from all the rest of the components so that I could easily migrate that should I need to restart another project again. Uh, the actual experiences maps are all staged into a, another plugin. I created a mesh library where all static meshes reside. Again, easy to separate that from the rest of the project uh, and, and manage it independently. And then finally, Shooter Core Plus is anything I had to modify from either the content folder or the Shooter Core folder or any C++ um, classes that I had to create. I chose to create them in Shooter Core Plus so that should Lyra be updated, I shouldn't have any issues. So the intent of this is that the content folder, the core game, and the Shooter Core folder um, stay pristine so that any future updates to Lyra can be taken while all of my content will remain in these other plugin folders with the appropriate dependencies. So on that note, let's talk a little bit about how the dependency structure is. So as I mentioned, the core game and shooter core are the Lyra package and intent is not to modify those at all. Shooter core actually uses Lyra example as um, where a lot of the meshes and textures, et cetera, are stored. So that's part of the overall flow, but again, would not be changed. My mesh library has no dependencies on it. It's intended to be just a library of static meshes. The climate core is self-contained in that the landscape, the trees, the grass, and the weather systems are all placed into that uh, plugin, which can then be used in an experience when necessary. And Character Core is also has no dependencies as it is simply different cosmetic characters and anything related to a character self-contained in that folder. Shooter Core Plus does depend upon Shooter Core in that it is uh, attempting to either subclass, create C++ files, etc. So it does depend on Shooter Core, and it's an area where I can make adjustments to things that are necessary, and we'll talk about those later. From the Shooter Core code and the mesh library, we then get our abilities. So the abilities will spawn meshes into the world, like when you drop something out of inventory, so it needs to know where those meshes are. There are changes I had to make to some of the classes uh, from Shooter Core, which will then be found in Shooter Core Plus. And so that has a dependency. But the abilities core system will enable me to grant new skills and new abilities to players, manages all the inventory, and, and manages all the item definitions. On top of that, then, we build the buildable core. Buildable core takes an ability 
and an item and the building system and brings those all together to be able to build objects into the world. And then finally, everything comes together in the various game modes and experiences um, where I've isolated those into their own separate plugin to keep things simple. So let's flip over to the game and I'll give you an example. So in the editor, launch the basic startup. Go for play, and you'll see standard Lyra experiences, and then an example. Where I'm going to show you a bit more of an open world. So first, I'm going to do is turn off bots, so I don't want to deal with that. If I go into standard, only the standard plugins are loaded, and you'll note that it's basically standard. Right? I have my weapons, the weapon spawners, I have my grenade, and all those basic elements. All right. If I escape out of that, and instead go into an experience that's going to be dependent upon all of the plugins, we're going to get a different set of experiences. First of all, the mesh has changed over to a custom character mesh. So you can see the character mesh is different. Um, if you look at the bottom right, you'll see I have three abilities that have been granted beyond the a grenade. So, for example, I can do a slide with T. I can do an area effect with Y. And I can do a effect uh, around myself basically with U. You'll also notice a different weapon. So this is a grenade launcher that came in from uh, one of my plugin folders, and so it has the ability to launch grenades. You'll see items that are in the environment that I can interact with. Pull up my inventory, and you'll see that I can filter to just resources, items that I have equipped, any crafting recipes, building blueprints, abilities, skills, and currencies. So let's go grab a few more. Let's go to the node and we'll get some ore out of the node. Node, you notice the node depleted and it'll respawn in about 15 seconds. I'll pull up my inventory. You now see I have a lot more resources. I've got my two weapons that I've picked up. I have three crafting recipes. I've got my building components that I can build with. I have my three skills, or sorry, my three abilities, and then eventually my skill system will be here and my currencies here. Some of these things um, you can't drop. So if you notice the drop icon went red, it won't actually let me drop my currency. However, resources I can drop. So if I drop this rock, it's gonna drop it into the world, then it'll stabilize, and then I can pick it back up. Pick this one up, go back into my inventory, back to my resources, drop the meat in the world, drop the wood in the world, delete the cooked meat, delete the leather, go back. You notice that uh, I don't have the cooked meat or the uh, wood. So let's uh, pick up the cooked meat. Let's leave the wood there. It'll decay over time. You'll notice the node has come back. So we can come back, get more stone out of the node. There goes the wood, it decayed. And then eventually we'll have our crafting systems here where we'll be able to draw crafting. If I hit B, I can move into build mode. And you see I, I'm gained all the abilities to construct. So I'll construct two posts another post on top basically just operating the way it would but using the building systems and finally if I hit escape and I go into options and go under my keyboard you'll see all of my abilities have have the key binding set up I interact and toggle my enter and exit building modes my building controls 
and then any of the active uh, slots, the 14 active slots that I've set for that. So that gives you a little bit of a tour of the basics. Um, yeah, from here we'll dive into each of the actual systems and, uh, and hopefully this project will work out long term. Thanks for watching.